The new M4 and M4 Pro MacBook Pros are here, and this is undeniably the biggest jump in Apple Silicon performance that we have seen since, well, since it's existed. However, with incredible performance like this, there are a few trade-offs, and these new MacBook Pros aren't 100% positive developments. But if you are looking at buying the base model, there are a lot of things here to tempt you. In addition to the new M4 chip, we also now get a Thunderbolt port on the right hand side. That was previously not available on the M3 MacBook Pro. And in addition, we now get 16 gigabytes of RAM as standard, which really really does make a big difference at that $1599 starting point. So it seems like the value proposition is pretty good, but let's not forget that the M4 Pro MacBook Pro has gained four performance cores. That is an absolutely massive jump. Last week when we got a peek at the Geekbench multi-core scores for these new chips, we were astounded to find that the M4 Pro was outperforming the M3 Max and the M2 Ultra. However, Geekbench is only one benchmark and things aren't quite as simple. In Cinebench 2024, for example, we find that the M4 Pro doesn't quite beat the M3 Max, although it is nearly identical, which is very impressive given the deficit of CPU cores. But it's not outperforming the M2 Ultra, which kind of makes sense, considering that that thing has double the performance cores of the M4 Pro. But if we look at the GPU versions of both of these tests, the trend is reversed. The Geekbench 6 Metal GPU test shows the M2 Ultra way ahead of the M4 Pro. But if we look at Cinebench, the M2 Ultra is completely underperforming. It's barely faster than the M4 Pro. So depending on which benchmark you use, the results are actually very inconsistent. But things become a little bit more realistic when we put them in a real world test. In the Blender Classroom CPU test, we find that the M4 is significantly faster than the M3, but it's not quite as fast as the M3 Pro. And the same goes for the M4 Pro. It is remarkably close in performance to the M3 Max without actually being able to touch the M2 Ultra. It just has so many more CPU cores. But something pretty crazy happens when we move over to the GPU render, and that is that the M4 Pro is only three seconds slower than the M2 Ultra. How? This thing has 20 GPU cores compared to 76. That is incredible. But when we look at the comparison with the M3 generation, it provides some more context. So this is a really, really solid improvement in the actual cores themselves. And clearly the M3 and the M4 with their advanced new GPU architecture is a lot more effective and efficient than the older M2 GPU cores in the M2 Ultra. So needless to say, I am pretty excited to test out the M4 Max. And if you don't wanna miss that video, make sure to get subscribed down below. But all this incredible performance does come at a cost. And before I tell you about that, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Taurus. Their new Ostand 360 spin case and mini mag power bank are the perfect companion for your iPhone 16. Coming in three aesthetic colorways, Dune, Onyx, and Ivory, the O-Stand case is the best option for comfort and protection. Taurus is the original designer of the O-shaped stand case, and they've been perfecting that design for a long time. O-Stand combines the utility of a protective case with MagSafe compatibility, a ring grip, and a phone stand. The stand also rotates to stand your phone up in landscape and portrait orientation and to provide convenient grip when using camera control on iPhone 16. And the perfect complement for your new protection is Taurus's Mini Mag Power Bank. With a slim design weighing just 111 grams, it packs an impressive 5,000 milliamp hour capacity, good for charging an iPhone 16 Pro 1.5 times. Plus, it slips easily into your pocket with a design slimmer than most wallets. So to learn more about Taurus's new accessories, check out the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. But now we do have to talk about the caveats because these new M4 MacBook Pros are bringing some pretty ludicrous performance figures. And I mentioned earlier that that comes at a cost. And it was while I was testing Cinebench and Blender on the CPU that I started to notice something, especially about the M4 MacBook Pro. And that is the fan noise has gotten pretty noticeable. When you run Cinebench on this thing, the fan is absolutely maxed out. 
And even more strangely, the M4 Pro is actually quieter than the M4, despite being significantly more powerful. Take a listen to the comparison between the M3 Pro, M4 Pro, and M4. It's weird, right? It seems counterintuitive until you realize that the M4 MacBook Pro only has a single fan, whereas the M4 Pro has two fans. So you don't have to spin them as fast to move more air through the case. But curiously, despite the fact that the M4 is the loudest, it also runs the coolest. Surface temperatures measure 33.9 degrees Celsius at the hottest point. The M3 Pro gets up to 36.8, and the M4 Pro up to 39.1. But that being said, you definitely should keep in mind that by packing four additional performance cores into the same chassis, the M4 Pro is going to consume more power and produce more heat. It's just simple physics. And the result of that is the fan noise is definitely more audible. Now, in a future video, I want to compare the M4 Max in the 14 inch to the 16 inch because I think that this time around, the, the difference in cooling capacity of the 14 versus the 16 inch chassis is gonna be pretty interesting to watch. So make sure to get subscribed for that video. But let's move over to gaming for a moment and I wanna test a tried and true classic Mac OS game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a Rosetta game, but it runs really well on Apple Silicon and it allows us to see really how these GPUs perform. And honestly, I am very, very impressed. The M3 Pro, scores 36 FPS, the M4 Pro scores 56. That's super impressive considering that the GPU is barely any different and the M4 Pro only has two additional cores compared to the M3 Pro. You're really getting a lot for those extra cores. But let's see if that holds true in another game that's really well optimized for the Mac. Death Stranding just came out fairly recently and I wanna really push these systems, so I'm running it at 4K maxed out settings. So it's no surprise that the M3 and the M4 are only able to pull 20 and 23 FPS respectively, but those extra two cores in the M4 Pro really do make a massive difference, bumping it up from 30 FPS to 43, and that has a huge impact on playability. All right, so next up, let's do some Final Cut Pro. I've built this 30 minute timeline. It has a couple of effects and titles, and we're going to see how it runs on the M4 and M4 Pro. And wow, already just a minute in, the M4 Pro is almost twice as far along as the regular M4. And in terms of fan noise, both of the machines are running their fans at about 2,500 RPM, but that's not something that you can really hear, so not a concern at all so far. For context here, my M2 Ultra took 3 minutes and 40 seconds to render this clip. We're coming up on that time now at 94% done, holy cow! And time at 350. And time, okay, six and a half minutes for the M4. All right, so let me start the export timer on these and we can recap that, because holy cow, the M4 Pro was only 10 seconds slower than the M2 Ultra, and it was three seconds faster than the M3 Max. That is really, really impressive. And it's also a very significant jump from the regular M4 chip. But a really strong showing for the M4 chip as well, it's almost a minute and a half faster than the M3. But when it comes to the export, a very, very slight, less than 1% lead for the M4 Pro with two and a half minutes down. Let's see how it shakes out. Okay, 15 and a half minutes, the M4 Pro has finished, and 16 minutes and eight seconds for the M4. Now that's a really interesting result because the M4 Pro has gained about a minute and a half over the M3 Pro, but the M4 chip has gained substantially over the M3. It was only about 40 seconds behind the M4 Pro, whereas the M3 was almost three minutes behind the M3 Pro. And let's see if this holds true in DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna take the same 30 minute clip and we're gonna export that to the desktop starting now. Now the M3 Pro completed this export in 16 minutes, 53 seconds. We're coming up on 14 minutes here and we're almost done. This is looking pretty good. 
And there we go, 14 minutes, 32 seconds. And there's the M4 at 14.58. Again, super impressive. The M4 Pro is more than two minutes faster than the M3 Pro, and the M4 chip improves dramatically over the M3. That is really, really impressive. Now, finally today, I wanna to talk about AI because these MacBooks are being advertised as the best ground up machines built to run AI. And in fact, Geekbench has a new AI benchmark tool that allows us to get a sort of a rough idea of how these things should do. And if we compare the M4 Pro to the M3 Pro, You'll notice that uh, when it comes to the CPU, Apple seems to have made some big changes as even the base M4 is outperforming the M3 Max. But when it comes to the GPU, things are more in line with what you would expect. The M3 Max with the most amount of cores is getting the highest score. But where we see the biggest jump is in the neural processing unit benchmark. That shows an absolutely massive difference between even the M4 and the M3 Pro. So who knows, maybe Apple was right and the neural engine is just that much better for AI. We'll have to find out. And side note, if you have any AI tools that you'd like me to benchmark, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to try to incorporate that if I can. But what we have here is a really interesting distinction because this is undeniably the biggest jump in performance that Apple Silicon has seen. But it does come with some trade-offs. While the base model has gotten to be a much better value with three Thunderbolt ports and additional RAM, that fan noise is annoying and it's kind of bringing me back to the Intel days. So for my money, I kind of feel like the 1999 binned version of the M4 Pro might just be the sweet spot. If you wanna fall somewhere in the middle, both in terms of performance and fan noise and temperatures and price, that 1999 model does seem fairly tempting. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below, which of these machines would you buy or how would you configure an M4 or an M4 Pro MacBook Pro? Now, as I mentioned before, holy cow, there is a lot to talk about. So I'm gonna have a bunch of videos over the next several days. We gotta cover the Mac Mini, we gotta cover the new iMac, there's M4 Max, 14 versus 16. Holy cow, I don't even know how I'm gonna make videos on all of this stuff but I'm sure gonna try. And I'll make a playlist to make it easy to find all of these videos, so definitely check that out. And of course, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to get subscribed, comment, and I will see you in the next one.